Hey guys, Dave Bull here. Today we got a look at a legendary tier battleship, German battleship. The Grosser Kurfürst, as some call it, or as they say along the Rhine River in Germany, Grober Kurfürst. I'd like to go with the Germans on this one, so I usually call it Grober, but we might use that interchangeably depending on the situation. Anyways, here we got a game on the map, Shards Domination Mode game. Note we're on the closed side of A. I refer to the south side of A and the north side of C as the closed sides. That means you have very limited access to get into those caps. We got two gaps here, and those are very easy to zone torpedo. So you want to be very careful when electing to go through those. And if you don't have really good support as a destroyer, you might want to think twice about making that play really aggressively. Or if you're the support ships like we are in this situation, maybe we want to explore alternative options. We don't necessarily want to abandon the cap, not cover it, but we got to be careful with how we're uh, playing that. So we're going to actually first go towards the right-hand gap here. we got kind of the A gap on the left, the B gap, where we're going to be going. And then once we determine that we, nobody's spotting the destroyer, he's still a threat, we're just going to go all the way around these islands. Now we are running the current version of the Balls to the Wall secondary build. So that's pretty much all the secondary mods, perks on Celiax. we got the new Fuso Commander. Low level, only level 8, I believe, uh, boosting the fire chance. That does affect the secondaries. Keep that in mind. You can check the ship stats if you want confirmation of that, but it does affect that fire chance. And then we got uh, Von Hipper increasing the secondary range. So due to the build and due to the fun factor of that play style, we want to get into position to use these secondaries, but in this game we're going to kind of highlight when to pursue a secondary attack and when to kind of let that fade into the background, you know, something you want to do but not something you currently can do. So we're going to be trying to evaluate the situation. First up, we got this Yamato here. He's going broadside. Now we're going to go ahead and take advantage of that as best we can. We give him a couple slaps there and uh, do some fair amount of damage. Looks like we got him for about half his health to open the game. And note, you know, we've gotten to the B gap that we we're talking about here. Still, we got a destroyer in the cap. We can see someone's capturing it. Unspotted. That means we're not sailing into that gap. And I think we're going to actually see some torpedoes coming out of there. Because he's going to have his attention on me and any other battleship that would be pushing in there. He could be zoning those uh, gaps with the torps, just kind of blind firing them, uh, trying to protect pieces of C rather than hitting individual targets. But anyway, going around here... Now we got kind of options. We can push north, potentially get some flanking shots on the guys that we're fighting over here. Or we can also support the action on B. A lot of times those guys are going to be either pushing into the B cap or just fighting the guys that on the blue team that spawn by B. They're not going to be paying as close attention. So we could potentially get those crossfires. Currently all we can see over here is that turpid that keeps going behind that island. We don't have great shots on him. So we're just going to be trying to... See if we can get shots on this Alaska. A limiting factor on us here is the Yamato. And at longer range engagements, he's going to have the advantage over us. Especially if he uh, plays it pretty carefully. We also have the, whatever that destroyer is, throwing out the torpedoes. So we weather the storm there from the Yamato. Luckily, we don't take too much damage. Pop the secondary booster here any second. We're going to see the secondaries in action on this Alaska. Now keep in mind, the bigger caliber guns on both the Bismarck and the Grober, in terms of secondaries, you got 150 millimeters, but the smaller caliber guns on this one, they are bigger than the Bismarck. So you get more of this juicy damage, even in against an Alaska, which is a pretty well-armored ship, at least in my experience. Pretty much every shot we're getting on that guy is doing raw damage. And that's a, wet, you know, it's a withering storm that that guy has to kind of... <laughs> weather and of course he gets sunk immediately after so pretty effective there now we got options we got two turpices over here and uh you know we can try and close the gap there maybe get those secondaries still in play to do so though you can see on the map the amato's got crossfire uh kind of blocking abilities and he's still targeting us so if we uh, go towards those turpices he's shooting us in the broadside we're probably dead already and uh, speaking of punishing hits, look at the Turpets taking a Citadel shot from the Grober at range. But this is kind of the mentality we're talking about here, and it's especially applicable at Tier 7 and even more so at Legendary Tier. At least as the way people are currently playing, 
usually quite passive. You know, people don't know that the service cost is paid the minute you load into the game. So they think if they get sunk or if they lose a bit of, uh, if their paint gets scratched on their ship or whatever, they're going to lose credits. No, you pay the fee up front, then you earn credits by doing useful things in the game, and hopefully that offsets the service cost. So if you're losing a lot of money on Legendary Tier, it's probably because you're playing too passively. But that's the situation we find ourselves in. So being really aggressive charging into these guys is often going to get you sunk. So we got to kind of pick our spots here. Again, when we saw we had an opportunity to get that Alaska, without getting dinged up too bad by the Yamato, we moved ahead, got some pretty good raw damage from the secondaries, and then when the Yamato came back into play, he kind of pushed us away from these Terpuses, and that's fine. We just need to stay away from him. We need to stay away from that Destroyer. That was the last scene around A, who's launched some torpedoes at us. We got another Destroyer spotted there, judging by the torpedoes on the map, and we just actually... Saw them on the game screen there. So we've kind of got a pretty good idea where the destroyers are. And since they're not currently pushing into us, that gives us a little bit more leverage. But again, this is all kind of about picking the spots. Yes, we've got the ship spec'd for secondaries, and we need to be using them whenever we can. But we don't want to get sunk disproportionately early just by trying to force the situation. So now we're coming around B here. We need to. I'm going to be pinging C because we need to get one of these caps. They currently control A and C, and we're contesting A, so they're not currently getting the points. But if that Alaska goes down, we really don't have anyone in the neighborhood over there to kind of support the the retaking of that cap. So C looks like the best bet. We got the most ships over here. I think this cruiser that goes in there ends up dying, so maybe I shouldn't be suggesting as enthusiastically for him to get on yet if it's not safe, but time is of the essence. Even though we got a lead on ships and we got a lead on score currently, the longer the cap situation remains kind of up in the air, the more that can change pretty quickly. Alaska pops up. Here he is broadside. Now, I thought he was angled away. I should have checked on the map. You can see he's actually pointed in slightly, and we dropped those shells just over him. So a bit of a miss there, and he's going to kind of try and angle in here. These guys need to be focusing me down, especially with this destroyer in the area. He can see where his destroyer is, and... Frankly, the Kagero's going to... We got torpedoes there. That's a clue that he's in the area for us. But he's going to pop up on the screen here. There he is. We immediately pop that secondary booster. And look at the work that these things do on this thing. We're going to zap him once with the main battery, I believe. But wicked shots taking out the engine, doing damage, you know, causing this guy pain and suffering and misery. And he just got too close to this thing and he got spotted. So that's a major mistake. You don't want to be doing that. And unluckily for him, we're running the pure secondary build every which way we can. So we go ahead and take him out for the close quarter expert. But that's, we've kind of seen the two main situations in player versus player where you're going to get the really juicy damage. Firing on the destroyers, firing on those cruisers. Battleships, we're still going to get a lot of hits on them. And we're going to get some damage here and there when we get those. And we'll see some exchanges with this Roma here. You can keep an eye on the damage counter from these secondaries. But we're more reliant on starting fires and doing fire damage against battleships. They got better armor schemes. The secondary guns aren't going to do as much raw damage. And we're going to see, I'm going to kind of hope that we're going to get more damage doing this, you know, shooting this Roma than we actually do. We weather the first shot there off the nose. We got the angling down pat, but now I'm kind of like, all right, we got to get rid of this guy. He's pretty low. I'm going to open up the ship angle here, and I think that's going to allow him to get a fairly juicy shot. But note, we're getting hit after hit after hit. Where's the damage indicators? We're not getting any damage. So, again, if we're going to try and force our secondaries into the game, we want to be doing it against cruisers and destroyers. No real reason to be forcing them into this Roma. We're going to want to continue to duel him by punching out his guns if possible. That's what we're trying to aim for there, to knock out the guns. And then we want to use these secondaries as kind of a way to tip the scales. If we can get one or two fires, he's forced to use the damage con. And if a fire sticks, all of a sudden we got an advantage. And you can see there a moment ago what I was talking about. I was kind of opening up the ship, making sure we got as many secondaries as we could. And he got just enough of a flat angle on us to punch through that nose. And give us... It wasn't a devastating strike. And we're still left alive, of course. But potentially could have been iffy. So... The moral of the story is there, you know, hopefully this whole game I've been trying to make the point, but 
don't force the secondaries into play. When they're appropriate, you know, against destroyers, cruisers, you can roll the dice, take a little bit more of a chance. Against battleships, just use them as kind of one advantage that you can potentially use to defeat the enemy, but you don't want to go all in on it. You don't want to be too reliant on those secondaries in those situations. The other thing you got to keep in mind on secondaries and also start to think about with regards to AA is when the match starts, that's when those weapon systems are at their peak performance. Every time you take an HE salvo, you know, you see those secondary icons when you're shooting at ships, those are those guns getting knocked out. Once they're taken out, they're out of the game. So the more HE salvos you take over the course of the match, the less secondaries you're going to have remaining, the less AA guns and the less effective those systems are. So it's kind of, you know, you can see in these, in these later game exchanges, we're still having a lot of output uh, from those secondaries, but potentially, you know, their effectiveness decreases over time. Anyway, uh, trying to figure out what's going on here. Obviously, the destroyer just blasted the guy in B, and then he's going to go ahead and try and take B. Now we're just going to basically rush him. Now at this point in time, Game's looking pretty good. We're about to flip C. They're about to flip B. So we're still going to have the two cap to one advantage. Uh, time's ticking down. You know, we're going to win on score here. So we're going to kind of push aggressively. The guy's going to wind up killing me. I'm going to spot him. I think he, right after he gets some salvos in the water, I'm going to open all the way up trying to hit him with the secondaries. We can watch him play out. But the, the Udachi's torps are going to take us out. And that's going to be all she wrote. So this isn't like a barn burner of... A game and damage it's not bad we got the high caliber we got the confederate so we got the damage medals in this game good damage output but i thought uh, the reason i picked it was because we got different situations and a pretty good look i thought at when to kind of think about pushing in trying to get those secondaries in play and you know had they actually hit this guy they might have been useful there but you know we also saw some situations where maybe pushing in isn't the wisest so hopefully that gives you a little bit of a way to think about how to use these secondary based ships if you're especially if you're going all in on the secondary builds anyway that'll do it for that one guys if you did enjoy that one please hit the thumbs up new to the channel consider subscribing lots of world of warships come on all the time questions comments leave below love to hear from you guys and we'll see y'all later peace